The state of Minnesota is blessed with an immense wealth of natural wonders, thousands of pristine lakes, rivers, and streams. Minnesota also has a rich outdoor heritage with virtually unlimited access to boating, swimming, and fishing. But that heritage is now threatened by aquatic invasive species that jeopardize recreation and the delicate ecological order. It's time for us to take that threat seriously. More than two dozen aquatic invasive species have invaded Minnesota's waters. Our challenge is to keep these invading species from spreading further and to prevent new ones from getting a foothold in our state. What do we mean by aquatic invasive species? They're plants and animals that live in the water and are not native to Minnesota. When these species are accidentally or intentionally transplanted into our waters, they can upset the ecological balance. No matter how they get here, the environmental consequences can be severe. Creatures like zebra and quagga mussels were transported in the late 1980s from the Black and Caspian Seas of Europe and Asia. They came in the ballast tanks of ocean-going ships and were unwittingly discharged from ballast water into the Great Lakes. New species of carp brought here from Asia are creating headaches both above and below the water's surface, and Eurasian water milfoil grows into mats on the water's surface that interfere with swimming and boating and diminish the visual appeal of our lakes. These seemingly unrelated species share a common and disturbing trait. In our ecosystem, they lack disease and predator controls, so these non-native species reproduce and spread at an amazing pace. The consequence is that they compete with native species for food and habitat. This can dramatically affect commercial, tourism, and recreational uses of Minnesota's well-known lakes and rivers. Foremost among the invertebrate invaders are zebra mussels, small striped mollusks about the size of your thumbnail that multiply at incredible rates. The zebra mussels encrust rocks, docks, boats, and water supply intakes with a sharp coating of shells. Meanwhile, their larger but lesser known relatives, quagga mussels, colonize deeper water. Like relentless underwater vacuum cleaners, zebra and quagga mussels voraciously filter algae and plankton from the water, taking food away from native clams and upsetting the natural balance in lakes and rivers. While this filtering may make the water clearer, it also reduces the food supply that sustains plants and fish. So how are zebra and quagga mussels spread to new locations? These and other aquatic invasive species hitchhike in several ways, by attaching to things that have been in the water, by clinging to aquatic plants, and by being carried with the water itself. Once introduced to a lake or river, zebra mussels appear on docks, boat lifts, shallow rocks, and aquatic plants. Within a few years, an entire watershed can be infested. Sharp shells are attached to rocks and wash up on beaches, discouraging swimming. A loss of tourism dollars can follow. Less widespread, but grabbing lots of headlines, are carp from Asia. Specifically, the bighead and silver carp species, which pose a significant threat to Minnesota waters. Bighead and silver carp are voracious plankton eaters that strain the water of nutrients and outcompete native fish species for food. Originally stocked in aquaculture ponds in the south to control algae, floods allowed them to escape into the Mississippi River drainage and move upstream. They are prolific breeders, capable of virtually taking over entire stretches of river, altering the local fish community dramatically. While bighead carp eat more and grow larger, it's the high-flying silver carp that offer vivid evidence of the invasion. Approaching boats can scare entire schools of silver carp into leaping out of the water, causing serious injuries when they hit boaters and personal watercraft users. Eurasian water milfoil is one of the plant invaders which has become a nuisance in many Minnesota waters. The introduction of Eurasian milfoil to America can be traced to the aquarium trade, where plants were imported for use in fish tanks, but ended up in local waters. Eurasian milfoil is an aggressive, rooted plant that quickly grows to the surface. It spreads out across the water surface, forming an umbrella-like canopy that blocks sunlight and chokes out the native plants below. Milfoil forms dense, unsightly cover through which it's difficult to swim or navigate. Small pieces of milfoil carried on boats and recreational gear can seed a new invasion if they are carried to other lakes.
Minnesota law requires everyone to clean off all plant material and any prohibited invasive species from their watercraft. To combat the spread of invasive species, there is a three-step, easy-to-remember process called clean, drain, dry. It only takes a few minutes for boaters and outdoor enthusiasts to apply these simple yet effective steps every time they leave a boat access or body of water. Many boaters have become accustomed to checking their trailers and watercraft for aquatic plant fragments in an effort to stop the spread of Eurasian milfoil. This procedure only takes minutes and it can prevent a permanent infestation on another lake. This is not an optional activity in Minnesota. It's the law and violators risk getting citations for not following the regulations. Now, in addition to looking for aquatic plants, it is also necessary to visually inspect and to feel the surface of boats and equipment for other aquatic invasive species, such as tiny zebra mussels. As you move around the boat, check the anchor and anchor lines for plants, snails, and mussels. On the trailer, check the rollers and trailer bunks and remove any plants. Check the trailer fenders and the entire length of the axle for any plants that may be clinging to them. Remove any plants that are snagged on the boat's lower unit and propeller, and lower the motor so it drains completely. Look closely at the lower unit and motor parts that are below the waterline for zebra mussels, snails, and other aquatic animals. Also inspect the hull and other boat equipment where these plants and animals could attach. Run your hand over the boat hull below the waterline and over the transom to detect if there are any tiny zebra mussels attached. Waterfowl hunters need to clean all plants, animals, and mud off their boats, trailers, waders, push poles, decoy lines, and decoys. Anglers should make sure their fishing lines and fishing lures are free of aquatic plants and animals. If you use a personal watercraft, clear all plants from the water intake, impeller, and trailer. Then run your engine for five to 10 seconds to blow out any remaining water and to eject any plants hidden in the water lines. To comply with state law, you must drain all water from your watercraft and any container or equipment that could hold water carrying invasive plants or animals. This means you must remove the drain plug to drain water from your bilge and then leave the plug out while transporting. You also have to drain your live well, bait bucket, any container, and recreational equipment. This includes the lower units of outboard motors and the water lines of personal watercraft. If you're a wakeboard boat user, you need to make sure you aren't carrying aquatic invaders in your ballast tanks. If you can't completely drain the ballast tanks, you should flush and decontaminate them by filling them with hot water. Anglers using live bait must take additional precautions as well. They must drain out the water in their bait buckets on shore and replace it with clean water if they want to save bait for future use. If you're a waterfowl hunter, you need to remember to drain your decoys as well as your boat. Because the law makes it illegal for you to transport aquatic invasive species, the DNR recommends some additional steps to help remove or kill aquatic invasive species that may be attached to your boats and equipment after cleaning and draining. Option one is to use hot water to rinse all areas of your boat, trailer, live well, and gear that have been in the water. This will kill invasive species such as zebra mussels. Option two is to use a high pressure water spray on your boat and gear to remove invasive species. If effective cleaning equipment is not available, option three is to let your boat, gear, and equipment dry for at least five days. Allow any equipment that may have absorbed or collected water to air dry for at least five days as well. Following these clean, drain, and dry procedures will prevent you from giving any invading aquatic species a ride to another Minnesota river or lake. Aquatic invasive species pose a very real threat to the ecosystems of Minnesota's lakes and streams. Once invasive species arrive in new areas, there are no easy ways to remove them. The best way to prevent the spread of aquatic invasive species is to take simple but effective steps of clean, drain, and dry every time you enjoy our state's waters. Aquatic invasive species are the biggest threat today facing our lakes and rivers and our ability to use and enjoy them. We really need everybody, you included, to step up, take responsibility for our actions so that we can enjoy these resources today and future generations can as well. 
If you have any questions about invasive species or how to fight the spread of them, please contact your local Minnesota DNR office or go to mndnr.gov for information and office locations.